Hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is Trinity Lozano. I'm a biology undergraduate at California State University, Long Beach, and I'm here to present today the research that I've done with Dr. Ben Perlman and our colleagues on stingray sting prevention. In Southern California, and in particular at Cal State Long Beach, we have the privilege of having beaches like Seal Beach, just a car, bike, or bus rides away. However, when visiting these wonderful local beaches, there may be some danger afoot. <laughs> Untold intended. An internationally popular 1970s film, Jaws, perpetuated the fear in many people that sharks and shark attacks were the main concern when visiting our local beaches. However, this is not the case. Between 1950 and 2021, there were only 201 confirmed shark-related incidences in California. In comparison, Seal Beach lifeguards see roughly 400 stingray-related injuries every year. And that's only Seal Beach, and, uh, anecdotally. These come from Uribatis pallari, or the round stingray. When the round stingray feels threatened, the they will elicit a strike with their serrated barbs, and if the skin is punctured, it can administer painful toxins. This is remedied by lifeguards by getting you a big boiling bag of hot water, and the point of injury is placed uh, in the water in order to denature the proteins, and it's a very, very painful and uncomfortable experience to have to go through. This, again, is a video of the behavior that was mentioned earlier. Um, my colleague Hannah Adamson had just uh, went over it, but to reiterate, we see our pseudo categoric force applicator <laughs> or the zombie foot is pressed down in order to elicit our response. The stingray will whip its tail up and uh, de deliver that barb. When uh, we record these videos in the dorsal and lateral view, we can import the videos into MATLAB and track the movement of the barb through the three-dimensional space. When we do that, we can take that information and calculate our velocity and acceleration of the barb moving through time. When we have acceleration and we have measured the mass of the rays, we can calculate force. And we have calculated in the lab that the force will, or excuse me, the ray will generate roughly 10 newtons of force when striking. So how can we protect against these painful stings? Normal wetsuits, although they provide insulation and flexibility when swimming in the ocean, they offer no, excuse me, they offer no protection against stingray barb. There are some current uh, specialized protection that's available. However, they provide protection and insulation, but they are inflexible and very expensive and just overall uh, inaccessible to the average beachgoer. So we are collaborating with a team of material science engineers to develop a, a neoprene material that will provide ample protection against these stingrays. This novel rubber material is placed in between and sewn between two neoprene layers. They have prototyped one that has a single layer of this rubber composite and one with a double layer of this rubber composite. And we really wanted to test at what force will this material fail? To begin, we collected barbs during beach stains on Seal Beach and Belmont Shore. Once the rays are pulled ashore, we can clip their nails like a fingernail, and this procedure offers no harm and the barb will grow back over time. Once we collected the barbs, we began our trials. We had eight neoprene two by two square samples. Four of them were single layered and four of them were double layered. For every sample, we had one barb available and we used the barb to puncture each sample five different times. We also cured an Ecoflex material and placed it underneath the neoprene sample. This Ecoflex material is flesh-like and it, it mimics the hardness of human skin in order to create the most realistic uh, conditions when we stab the sample. The barb is then clamped onto the Instrom machine that we used at Chapman University with Dr. Donatelli. The neoprene and 
Ecoflex complex is placed underneath the clamp, and the Instron machine has a load cell above the, the clamp that will administer a downward force through time. And the load cell is applying the force at roughly 0 0.001 meters per second. Here we have the needle-like bar puncturing through our samples once our trials are completed. We got these pictures. Once the Instron machine pushes all the way down, we can just lift the we can lift the clamp up in order to recover our material. Here we have a graph of our raw data uh, collected by the Instron machine. The solid blue line depicts the average forces uh, exerted on the double layer through time, and the uh, black dashed line represents the average forces uh, exerted on the single layers. We found that the single layer failed at roughly 15 newtons of force, the double layer failed at roughly 25 newtons of force, and we also observed that after puncture there were jagged up and, forward, up and downward slopes. And we believe that, the, excuse me, we know that these are artifacts of the serrations that are on the bar as each serration punctures through the material until we turn the Instron machine off and lift up the clamp again. We have a comparison once more of the maximum force used on both the double and single layered material. And as a reminder, the round stingray elicits roughly 10 newtons of force during their strikes. So we see that the forces generated by round rays are less than the amount of force needed to cause the materials, both single and double layer, to fail. Along with this, we can conclude that the neoprene material design can protect against most stingray-related injuries. Into the future, we'd like to mathematically quantify the sharpness of the barbs that we collect and determine whether or not this has an effect on the force needed to puncture through our samples. Along with this, we'd like to use tacker, flexible tack array sensors and try to measure in situ the forces that the round rays uh, administer and compare that to what we've calculated thus far in the lab. In conclusion, the neoprene design can protect against most stingray related injuries and our further investigation can help us better understand how to safely share ground stingray environments in Southern California. I'd like to thank everyone that helped us with our project, and I thank you for the attention. And I'd like to open it up for any questions. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the round ray is definitely the most abundant here in Southern California, and it's probably the easiest for an undergraduate uh, lab with no funding to <laughs> look at. Uh, but it would be awesome if we could study like an array of different species. Yes. Is there, do you know what kind of the natural parameters of stingrays are? Do any of them have different aspects, scales, or chemicals that they might approach the level of protection of that material? Ooh, that is a great question. I am unsure. But we can definitely ask Dr. Perlman about that after because I'm, I'm not sure, and that's a very good question. Sharks will eat them. Sharks? Thanks, Anna. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I saw this one up here first. Do you know anything about the material properties of the spine itself? And do they change over the over age? And um, the previous talk they talked about how they shed. Yeah, definitely. So we have noticed, like with the different bars that we've collected in our seines and like clipping them all, that there can be like a lot of variation within um, the needles. Can I take, I'm going to take you back to this slide right here. We can see some of them are ginormous. We have some that are maybe three or four inches. Some of them are really tiny. So there is definitely a lot of variation, and we want to look into like how that affects like whether it can puncture through our samples or not. Definitely. Uh, yes, hello. What if it stays within? What if 
does it better make sure it gets designed? Once it like gets, once it punctures, whether it gets caught? Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say that would probably be an issue, but the thing is we want to have this design to like withstand even getting punctured through in the very first place. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like we, we don't want it to get through enough to get stuck in the very first place. We want it to prevent that stain altogether. Dr. Singlet? Uh, how <laughs> does, does regular neoprene perform relatively to your uh, model? Definitely. So we have not taken like a like a sample of just like a, a controlled neoprene, like one that we can buy from any surf store yet, but that's something that we definitely want to take a look into and compare it between our actual sample and, but I mean, anecdotally, it's it offers little to no protection. Like, a, a lot of people in the lab go surfing before their lectures and, I mean, they're always scared about whether <laughs> or not <laughs> getting sunk by steam rays. Definitely. So we did talk about how, um, I can pull it up. We did talk about how on the Instrom machine, not that one, excuse me. We did talk about how on the Instrom machine we're applying force at 0 0.001 meters per second, and that's so, so much slower than what we've recorded uh, in our labs. However, this Instrom machine has its limitations, and it just simply cannot move at the force or at the speed that we've recorded. So if anyone has a machine that can move that fast, <laughs> we'd love to hear about it. 